Hey, you guys. I know why you're here. Part three, y'all. This is it. Uno, dos, tres. I'm done. <laughs> I am done. Before we get started, you guys go ahead and like the channel. Go ahead and click the bell for notifications so you'll be the first one to know when I have dropped another video of some juicy stories, honey. And then go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you want to. Thank God for all the new subscribers that come in. I hope you've been enjoying the drama field, the stories, y'all. <laughs> Oh, there's plenty more to come, plenty more to come. But this is just this series. So I don't know if you watch videos one and two, but now we're at video three. Video three, y'all, we need to fast forward 24 years. So we got together when I was 17 and we got a divorce when I was 17, 41, 41. 24 years later, you guys, 41 or 42, one of them, I don't know. 24 years later. In between that time, we have four children. Now they are 31, 30, 26, and 19. Out of that, we have three grandchildren that are six, four, and 18 months. Y'all, but in between there, my God, what can I say? In between that time, there were fights. There was misunderstanding. There was Verbal abuse, mental abuse, financial abuse. People don't talk about that financial abuse. Oh, my God. Almost being evicted. Uh, decided he didn't want to pay the rent anymore. Car being stolen. His car being stolen from the parking lot of Spring Spring Springdale's movie theater while we were in there watching Biker Boys. Oh my God, that was a, honey, a whole lot of stuff. Um, like I said, I um, decided he wasn't going to pay the rent anymore. Uh, we work really hard to get off any type of public assistance. All through the whole scheme of this, you guys, I found myself moving back to the hood for like 11 and a half years. So everything that I ever worked for now is gone. You just don't know what breaking up and divorce would do to you. You will find yourself in places that you thought you would never be or play, go back to places that you thought you were coming out of. So here we are 24 years later. So this is the incident that just absolutely, yes, we did marriage counseling, didn't work out. It, it just, it was over. When it is over, it is over. So let me tell you something. Nobody can tell you it's over until you decide it is over. It's just something in you that just finally says, this is it. So what finally said, this is it, was there was an incident where I was sitting on a bed. We ended up arguing. And in the midst of that, now, mind you, I had been eating a whole, 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 whole lot. I was much bigger than I was now because of just being depressed and going through whatever. Honey, next thing I know, I end up upside down, literally feet in the air. Have you ever watched wrestling where they drop a person on their head? Dropped on my head on the bed, thrown against the wall by my neck. I don't know how I went from a sitting up position to being up in the air, dropped on my head, thrown against the wall. Kids were running in. It is chaos. It is confusion. It was horrible. And I said, this is it. So I cornered him in the kitchen and I said, this was maybe like, I don't know, maybe a week later or so. I don't know how long it was later. I cornered him in the kitchen. I said, let me tell you something. You don't like me, do you? And he's like, no. And I said, and I don't like you. I said, it's time we move forward. You go get somebody to knock your socks off. I'll go get somebody to knock my socks off. This, we're done. Let me tell you something. When you have been with somebody for so long and you allow them to do so much, there's an absolute level of respect that drops down from that person toward you. They have no respect for you. But one thing they think that you would never leave. You would absolutely never leave. Why would you leave? You've been half your life. I'm 50 now. Half my life. 24 years is about half my life that you've been with this person. You ain't going nowhere. You just think I'm just going through whatever and you're going to do what you want to do. Honey, I move forward to get a divorce. 
So I go get a lawyer. Mind you, I tried to call legal aid and get a um, like a free. They, they let you get divorced for free. But because we had a minor child, they would not take our case because minor children and visitation and all of that can get real sticky and complicated. So we had to end up going to... Um, it's a class called for divorced children or something. You have to pay for that. You have to get the certificate. You have to bring it back. Then you can file for a divorce. So I had to do that. So I had I went and got a lawyer. He wasn't going to go get a lawyer. He didn't care if we stayed married or not because he was doing whatever he wanted to do anyways. So I went to go get a lawyer because I'm going to make this legit. So I went to go get a lawyer, $1,500 retainer at $200 an hour. Okay, let's move forward. I forgot what my lawyer's name was. He was in a rock band. He had long hair. Chad may have been Ray. <laughs> but he was in a band, though. He played at people's weddings and stuff like that. And so he was a really cool guy or whatever. And so $200 an hour. And he said, okay, do you have any property? Do you have this? Do you have that? I said, look, we ain't got nothing. He was like, okay, so this should be pretty fast. He was like, it'll probably take a, like less than 30 days because we're just going to do a dissolution of marriage because you guys don't have any property. Property, There's no assets involved, so it's kind of cut and dry. They'll establish child support and visitation, which is court standard, and that's it. Boom, boom, bang. You'll be out of there. Fine, great. Honey, let me tell you something. Well, should have took... 30 days took seven months at $200 an hour. He drug that out. First not showing up, then showing up and decide I want to sue her, sue me for a car that had got repossessed that was in his name. But it was an asset. But he told them that he still owed on the car. So if he still owed for the car being repoed, then that was something that we purchased when we were married. So I could be liable for it. Bruh. But you filed bankruptcy. So you don't owe for that car anymore. You just want to drag it out. Court session after court session after court session. So my lawyer... Had to go pull up, I guess, his bankruptcy information, uh, the get the documents from the car place. Mind you, I'm paying this man $200 an hour, so I'm racking up a bill. He never got a lawyer, so you ain't paying nothing. You're paying nothing, and I'm paying this man $200 an hour. We get to court, to the other side of the court, so they pause the 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 divorce proceeding and we have to go to this other little court where he's supposed to sue me well technically well not technically i don't know what all the uh, legal lingo is but at the end of the thing he didn't bring no documents with him at all my lawyer had all the documentation and so the judge said i could rule in your favor but I'm not going to because you chose to sue her and you did not bring not a piece of documentation in here. All the documentation is from her lawyer. So with that being said, case dismissed. I said, thank you, God. So me and my lawyer, we walking back to the office. He just lived a little ways from the, um, from the building. We're walking back to the office. He was like, why did you marry this guy? He was like, I just don't, he's cussing, F and get it. This man is da, 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 da. But one thing this man told me when we first sat in his office, he said, the person that you marry is not the person you divorce. And I'm like, I don't know what he's talking about. I'm like, okay. He said, I've seen some stuff in court. The person you marry is not the person you divorce. Honey, that man assassinated my character. Talk about my parenting skills. Said that our son, the one that was still living at home, was raggedy. Didn't have no decent clothes. He he looked like a, a, I forgot what his terminology was. Honey, I had had a credit card to Children's Place. My son, if anybody been to Children's Place, honey, they got Argyle sweaters or with the matching socks. That boy stayed in Argyle. 
my son had so many different clothes from children, children's place. He could have been a poster child for children's place. They used to call him Lil Russell Simmons because he wore Orgal all the time. So how is he bummy based on what you're saying? You're trying to assassinate my character and you're doing it in front of a judge. And I'm like, wow, really? So my lawyer was upset. So we finally, after, oh my God, seven long months, get back, we were back in there to get the whole proceeding done. Mind you, in the beginning, he wasn't showing up for like two to three court sessions. And no, he showed, he didn't show up for like two of them. And so the judge was like, I'm going to give him one more chance. He was like, the only reason why I have not just flat out ruled this divorce in your favor is because there's a minor child involved. So they established child support. They established the uh, medical. They established that he was supposed to pay some of my court fees, which to this day I haven't got, you know, my lawyer fees. All of those things were established and they uh, dissolved. There was irreconcilable differences or something like that. So we got divorced. So we walking down the street, me and my lawyer, I lie not to you. We started skipping skipping down the street. He was like, I'm so glad you finished with him and blah, blah, blah. And the thing of it was, I still had a bill, y'all. I still had a bill. I was making payments with this man. And I sat there. I said, God, I don't have the money to pay this man. I said, I got to pay him. I want the lawyer to come sue me. I said, but I don't have the money to pay this man. And he called me after the divorce. He called me and was like, hey, Sherry, how you doing? I said, I'm doing good. I said, well, I'll, I'll be there next week. You know, I'll call in a payment or what. He said, Merry Christmas. I said, Merry Christmas to you. I said, but I'll be there next week to make sure. He said, no, Merry Christmas. And I said, well, what? He was like, don't worry about the bill. He said, I'm so glad you threw with him. He said, and when you get remarried. I will come play at your wedding. <laughs> I said, I'm going to hold you to that, bro. <laughs> so he wiped the bill clean. Who, thank God for mercy. Go back to us skipping down the street. So by the time him calling me was like a month or so later, I was still paying on the payments a month or so later. We get down the street. Settled everything at his office. He told me you should get the papers in the mail within 30 days. It'll be signed. He was like, uh, we're supposed to send him a certified copy. He said, because that jerk didn't pay no money, I'm not sending him a certified nothing. He said, he can go down there and pay for his own copy. I said, show you right. We ain't pay for nothing. So I got, you know, he sent off the paperwork and all that stuff. Congratulations. Woo, woo, woo. Gave him a hug and now. In between that time, y'all, this the plot twist. My daughter was 18 at the time, 18 years old, called me upset and distraught. She said, Mommy, Daddy called me. I said, well, what do you want? I'm like, you know, I'm over him. What do you, what do you want? She said, Mommy, he asked me. He said, do you know this girl name? I ain't going to say her name. And my daughter was like, yeah. And he was like, where you know her from? She was like, she in my classroom. We've been in the same classroom since like the ninth grade, but they wasn't friends. They was just in the same classroom. And he was like, oh, that's your sister. What? That's your sister. I hung up the phone. I'm going ahead and let that marinate on you for the one time. Then proceeded to call the other daughter and tell her, you know, uh, uh, you know, Lex. Yeah, I mean, I know her, but I don't know her. She in my class. That's your sister. Let me ride this back for y'all. My youngest daughter always thought that her dad had an issue with her, right? Because he didn't come and take pictures. You know how you go to the prom, you take pictures. And your parents and them take pictures. So her date was there and their parents was there and their grandparents were there. They taking all them pictures. 
looking real cute. We smiling and grinning. But when she came back from the prom, she was like, Mommy, my feelings is kind of hurt. I don't understand why Daddy wouldn't show up for my prom. And I, I just, I was like, girl, I don't know what's going on with your dad, blue, 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 blah, blah, blah. But you had a nice time. Thank God, da, 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 da. And so graduation time come. He didn't show up for the graduation. But he called her to ask her for her diploma. Because when you turn 18, you don't have to pay child support. So she was hurt. I mean, I don't, what's, I don't think daddy liked me. I ain't. You know, I ain't never did nothing, da 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 Why wouldn't he show up for my graduation? I said, I call her Pam Pam. I said, Pam Pam, I don't know. I don't know. I said, but you graduated, honey. You're going to do great things, da 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 Then it all began to make sense. Because when you at the prom and you taking pictures, you clicking, your parents smiling, and da 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 And then what do you do? Go, go to school. Show everybody your pictures. Look, this is my picture. This is my picture. This is my picture. If he would have been seen in a picture with my daughter for prom, and she'd have said, who is that? That's my daddy. That's my daddy, too. He didn't come to the graduation, because which side you going to sit on? Which side you going to sit on? You going to sit over there with her mama? Or you're going to sit over here with, it, with us and, your, and the rest of your kids. That's why I said it wasn't personal, baby. It was a secret that had to be here. Boy, listen. It was a secret that he had to keep hiding. But the only reason why you told it, because you're trying to throw that last sting at me. Like I was going to be upset. Baby, let me tell you something. I wasn't no bit mad. Because I wasn't in love with you no more. And you weren't going to shake my wig because I'm free of you and all your mess. That's your mess you need to clean up. Your mess. That girl was so upset. I told my daughter, I said, so they showed me a picture of her on Facebook. I said, how could you not know that show, daddy? I said, that girl looked just... When I tell you... That girl looks, I didn't, like he said, took and spit her out and put some bundles in her head with a good old closure. She looked just like him. I said, how could you not know? She said, I don't pay that girl no attention. I wasn't friends with her like that. Baby, 18-year-old secret. The cribbity crap and cribbity crap up out. Crap. On the day I got divorced. And so they, my other kids, you know, reached out to her. The girl went off on Facebook. She said, my kids, she, well, she said, Pam Pam, a friend request on Facebook. And so my daughter accepted it. But she didn't know my other children at all. And her mama never knew he was married. Her mama never knew that me and Nafu had been together for 24 years. She was stuck. The girl told my daughter the mama was crying because she didn't know we had been married for 11 and a half years. Baby, I sat back. I said, dang, how I miss this one. If that fool ain't slicker, slicker, rock, baby, he's slicker than hen piss. Honey, he's looking at goose grease, baby. 18-year-old secret. I said, ooh, I know his family knew about that bull crap. I know they knew and they didn't say nothing but 18 years. I said, well, he wasn't too involved in their life. Because one thing about that Negro, most, he came home at night. Many times I ain't want him to come home. He came home. Only time he wasn't at home, if he... Well, girl, maybe he went up his mama house. <laughs> That's a whole nother story. So my daughter told me like a couple of weeks later that the mom, the girl's mom wanted to meet me. And my, my thing was, for what? For what? And she was like, I guess you want to talk. For what? We both got play, boo. Y'all kids is grown. I said, let me tell you something. Y'all kids was grown. I said, I could see meeting her. And tell me if y'all think this right. But it's done and gone now. 
But I told my daughter, I said, if y'all were minor children, I would meet with her because I would want the kids to have a relationship because they're minors. I said, but because y'all grown, then it's on y'all to connect together and decide if you want a relationship with a sister that you knew nothing, nothing about. Nobody knew nothing about that little girl except probably his, his mom or his family, but they sure didn't tell that one, baby. And I told her, I said, tell her, no, I don't want to meet her. I don't want to meet her. We're not going to sit there and just tell how he lied to all of us and rehash all of that. You know why? Because I didn't care. That's your mess. There's you with seven kids. And one, uh, a sequel went over there that you obviously didn't spend a lot of time with. They got cheated because you was cheating. Y'all, story time from the bedroom, honey. That drama, baby, I told you was done till you're going to be harder than what you put up. Baby, that was harder. That was harder. So after that, y'all, honey, I got my counseling. Got me some couch time. I talked my stuff out. I cried my stuff out. I prayed my stuff out. And it took some time. I'm not going to I'm not going to hold you. It took like 3 years, baby. It was times that I couldn't even say his name without bust out crying. But now I he don't bother me whatsoever. Matter of fact, he called me yesterday. And we sat right there and kikied on the phone yesterday. He, I don't know what he was talking about. He just be telling goofy jokes or whatever. I'm like, "All right, then get off the phone. I'm tired of talking to you." Talked to him yesterday. He don't bother me. He don't bother that's my kid's dad. It is what it is. Don't bother me. He got remarried. It is what it is. Gonna have your whole life. But honey, a whole nother baby. A whole nother baby. Look just like him. Look just like look just like him, child. Bed stories. Time for my bedroom. Y'all, I think I'm gonna start posting story time on like Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I got three good ones for next week. There. Oh, baby. I got three good ones, honey. <laughs> Thank you guys for all the support. I hope you enjoy this series here because it was a mess. <laughs> and we will see you next time on Storytime for my bedroom. Y'all feel free to subscribe to the channel. Like the uh, video. Share it if you want to. Tell everybody about my drama. I don't care. I'm an open book. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram and TikTok under I Love to Giggle too. And also you can follow me on Facebook under I Love to Giggle. And put down in the comments where you come from. If you came from TikTok or if you came from well, the other platforms, whatever the other platforms is. Or did somebody tell you go over there, hey, there's a woman sitting right there with a pink flower over her head telling her business. <laughs> How you get on this page, y'all? <laughs> you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you next week on Monday with another good old juicy story. All right, you guys. Bye.